So just remember guys, when you're measuring your pH, you're testing your pH, remember the number one rule is Hey guys, it's Colin. Welcome to the Tide at Iguana channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the most overlooked things, in my opinion, for home aquarium keepers. So I'm sure most of us, if you have an aquarium or you've ever had one in the past, we of course do lots of water testing. So when we do water testing, we tend to focus on three major things. So most people focus on ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. But there's one real big player that we often overlook, and that's usually that first thing in the test kit. It's of course pH. So I just wanna to preface today's video that I want you to sit and watch the whole video, take things in, absorb what you're gonna to learn today. Don't go home immediately and start making crazy adjustments to your aquarium or doing all these major changes. Just watch today's video, get a little bit better understanding of what we're gonna be talking about and then make your own educated decisions and informed choices based on that. So let's talk about pH. So what is pH? So let's define and talk about what is pH. So I just wanna say, we're gonna keep it very surface level today. This is not your sophomore chemistry class. I wanna keep it as light and surface level as possible, but for short, pH stands for potential of hydrogen. So what does this mean? So pH is a scale used to define basically how acidic or basic a solution is. So it goes from zero to 14. So of course, seven is neutral. So seven is things like pure neutral water, blood, milk. Those are all things that generally have a neutral pH. So seven is right in the middle, that's pure neutral. And then of course, towards the 14 direction, we have things that are very basic. So like detergents, things like that. And then all the way down to zero and one, we have things that are very acidic, like battery acid. So as far as pH, that is what the scale is. So you may be asking, Colin, what does this even mean? So I'm gonna break it down for you a little bit. So with the pH scale, one huge takeaway I want you to have for today's video is the pH scale is not necessarily a linear scale. So Colin, what does this even mean? So basically what I want you to consider is when we change from, let's say we have a pH of two, we go to a pH of three, you would think that's a difference of one, but actually this is what's called an inverse logarithmic scale so what does this actually mean? So it means, let's say you go from two to three, you would think that's a difference of one, but actually what it represents is a difference in tenfold or 10 times in the change in concentration in the hydronium ions in the water. So you would think two to three is just a change in one, but it's actually a change of a factor of 10. The same thing is, let's say you go from a pH of two to four, that change in concentration is actually a difference of 100 times. So just keep in mind, when you are adjusting pH, it's not actually a small change because of that inverse logarithmic scale. There's actually a major increase in the change, the higher in difference we go. So remember, two to three is not a difference of one, it's actually a difference of tenfold or 10 times. So keep that in mind if you adjust your pH. Okay, so let's talk about how do we test pH in the home aquarium. So the first one we're gonna talk about is our liquid test kit. So this one here we have, it's made by API. It's a great product. This of course, you add your aquarium water to the test tube and then apply the number of drops relevant to the solution. This is made in both a low range and a high range. So if you have very high pH water, you're gonna need that high range kit. But how these work is, it's basically a color chart. So I'll show you here on our color chart. So if we look at our color chart here, basically we can see it goes all the way from 6.0 all the way up to 8.8. .8. That's really, really hard water, like marine water. But you can see it changes color based upon what the pH is. One downfall of this type of testing is, of course, as you can see, some of these intermediate colors can be a little bit tricky to determine. Obviously, if you have 6.0 or like straight RO water, that's gonna be easy to tell. Same thing if you have like marine water or saltwater tank, it's gonna be easier to see those purple and yellow colors. But some of these intermediate tones, like these green and turquoise and these brown and orange tones, can be kind of hard to deceive with the naked eye. So that makes this, in my opinion, a little bit more of a qualitative assessment than necessarily a hard quantitative measurement of what you're doing. The next option in our toolkit would be something like our digital pH meter we sell here at the store. So the thing I like about this is it gives you a specific number. So you'll stick it in the water, submerge it there until the measurement stabilizes and it's gonna say 7.1, 7.2, 6.9. It's gonna give you a hard data number as to what you're tracking. Very easy to determine. 
And then as well, the nice thing about these, they do require periodic calibration, but in general, they're very easy to maintain, super affordable, and honestly, for the price, you might as well just have it in your toolkit. It's a great addition to your testing. But I like these guys because it's gonna give you that specific hard number as to what you're dealing with. You can pinpoint it and then address it as necessary. Okay, so the third tool I like is our Alert Combo from Seachem. So the first off, this particular packaging has both products. So it has the Ammonia Alert, great product, but it's separate video, but it also has the pH Alert. So the pH alert is actually a piece of impregnated plastic with a material that is reactive based upon the pH of the water. But what these are is you stick them on the inside of the glass and they're underwater. This tool I like especially because you can look and see what your pH is at a glance without having to break out the test kit, break out the pH meter and go from there. So if you're just liking to keep an eye on things, these are a great option. The ammonia alert's good for a year. The pH kit, a little less though. The pH one is accurate for six months. So you do need to replace these about twice a year, just like when you check your smoke detectors. Okay, so you may be asking, Colin, what is the best pH for my fish? So that question is actually gonna depend on the type of fish you're keeping. So just to give you some, some examples, certain types of fish will prefer very acidic water. So anywhere from like a 5.5 to a 6.5, very low pH, certain fish like rams and discus will prefer that softer water. However, these fish and a lot of these aquatic organisms are adaptable to their environment. So just be, because you have a fish that rec, like does best in that range, doesn't mean it can't be thriving and happy in other environments. So keep in mind what species you're keeping. Most of our freshwater fish are gonna thrive anywhere in a range from about six, five, all the way up to seven, eight. And then the other end of the spectrum would be things like your African cichlids, your Malawis, things like that. They're gonna like that really hard water, pH of anywhere from 7.2 to 8.4. And then if you wanna get even more extreme, things like your tank and Eakin cichlids will like hard water even higher than that. So very like liquid rock on your Tanganyikans. But in general, if we're anywhere between 6.5 up to 7.8, that's generally good. Most of my customers in our area, they tend to have water anywhere from about 7.5 up to 8.2. And here at the Tide of Iguana, our tanks tend to run a pH of about 7.8. So we like to keep our tanks of, of natural to where our tap water is because most of our customers actually use municipal water that's been treated. And so that water in our area generally comes from either rivers or limestone aquifers. And so that's gonna be very rich in ions basically, and it's gonna have that higher pH naturally. So just keep in mind, although the fish you're keeping may prefer a specific range, these fish, as long as they're kept in stable conditions, can be kept in a variety of different parameters. So like I said, if you have a fish at home and you go online and see, Oh my gosh, they do best of a pH of 7.0. If your pH is 7.8, do not go changing your tank to 7.0 in 24 hours. It's gonna set you up for a bad time. Remember, in the freshwater aquarium hobby, in the aquarium hobby in general, the most important contributing factor to success long-term is stability. So remember, if we do any changes, we wanna make sure they're small and incremental over time. One important factor to consider as well, with pH, it's not a stable factor. So pH can actually fluctuate and change depending on water quality. So if we have like an excessive built up of waste, decaying plant material, nitrates, I have seen that in my career contribute tremendously to the acidification of tanks. So for example, I've had customers come in, they have 180 part per million nitrates, and that pH number has crashed through the bottom, a pH of six, super acidic from what their water source naturally is. So keep in mind, pH will fluctuate with water changes, with change in chemistry, and things like that. So you're probably wondering, and I bet you Heather's wondering, Colin, how do I control and how do I maintain pH? So when we're discussing pH, it's very important that we also bring up our alkalinity. So alkalinity, let's talk a little bit about alkalinity. Alkalinity, also known as carbonate hardness, it's basically the measurement of our water's ability to resist change in pH. Kind of a, a mouthful, but basically what it is, it's the amount of, aka buffering capacity in our water so it keeps our pH stable and within a certain range. So it's also another useful thing to have with your test kit is to have a KH test kit or carbonate hardness test kit. That's gonna give you your alkalinity number. We do sell the KH or the alkalinity test kit. We also do sell, for my planted tank folks, we do sell a GH and KH test kit. So what is GH? Quick little tidbit for you. So GH or general hardness, that's the concentration of calcium and magnesium ions in the water. Now, of course, we know trace ions and trace minerals are very important for the equilibrium of all aquatic inhabitants, but for my plant folks especially, keeping your GH in the desired range can also be very useful. 
with GH2. GH can be addressed through the other products, but it also can be addressed as well through adding a trace mineral supplement, different salts, ions, things like that to boost that number. Now, so for most people in most freshwater home aquariums, it's uh, good to have a KH or a degrees of carbonate hardness anywhere between four to eight. So we can talk about that a little bit in another video, but when you're doing your uh, testing, if you have a KH of anywhere between four to eight, that's gonna mean your water has a pretty good capacity for buffering. So great products for the home aquarium as far as maintaining and controlling our pH. So let me grab another product I wanna show you guys. Okay, so we talked a little bit about alkalinity and its relationship to pH. Let's talk about buffers for the home aquarium. So, so one product I like to recommend for fish only systems, this is our Neutral Regulator by Seachem. So this product has a couple of benefits. So it's gonna detoxify ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. It will also remove chlorines and chloramines out of tap water, but this is also a buffer. So what is it gonna do? It's going to adjust our pH. This particular product, when applied at the proportionate correct dosage, is going to adjust our pH towards 7.0, or also known as neutral pH. So if you have a pH of 6.8, you have a pH of 7.4, this is going to steer it in the direction from either side towards that 7.0. Now, one thing to consider with this product is, this is a phosphate-based buffer. So we do have several different options, but with a phosphate-based buffer, plants are not the biggest fan of phosphates. And especially uh, in the planted tanks, there are other great options you would wanna use to more specifically target a specific pH. Let's talk about a few of those now. So here we have our alkaline buffer and our acid buffer. So what are these? These are literally an acid and a base. So most folks to target a specific pH, you're gonna use these in conjunction in a proportionate ratio to target the specific pH you are desiring. With the acid buffer, this one actually converts alkalinity into carbon dioxide, so it evaporates out of the tank. And then with our alkaline buffer, this will actually increase our alkalinity and also a secondary effect raises our pH. So generally with these products, they are to be used in conjunction unless you are targeting a specific range that's way outside of the normal realm. So one thing I wanna say in regard to these products is if you have a question about your pH or you're trying to target a specific pH, I would highly recommend you contact a member of our staff, come in store, drop us a message online, as for some direction on how to proceed. You generally don't wanna start just throwing this stuff into your aquarium, because like I said, that can lead to problems very quickly. So you wanna have a direct and focused campaign that's going to target your specific issue. But remember, a lot of these products are designed to be used in conjunction in a proportionate ratio. Sometimes it's a two to one, things like that. So you definitely wanna follow the manufacturer's instructions. And remember, small incremental changes are gonna be the best option when we are adjusting pH. So just remember guys, when you're measuring your pH, you're testing your pH, remember the number one rule is keeping the tank stable and without any big swings in parameters is gonna be the number one indicator of success. If you have any questions about pH, alkalinity, or any of your tank's water parameters or water chemistry, be sure to drop in store, send us a message online, or give us a call. Thanks guys and have a great day.